Hello everyone. Today we're tackling a critical topic in software security, race conditions. In this video I will break down what race conditions are, how they can be exploited, how to prevent them, and we'll also look at some concrete Python code examples. So what exactly is a race condition? In simple terms, a race condition occurs when the behavior of software depends on the timing or sequence of uncontrollable events, like the scheduling of multiple threats. This can lead to unpredictable outcomes, especially when shared resources are accessed concurrently without proper synchronization. So imagine two threads, thread A and B, both trying to update a shared variable. If thread A reads the variable, then thread B reads the same variable before A updates it, thread B's update could override thread A's, leading to inconsistence or incorrect data. So section 1. How do race conditions occur? First, unsynchronized access to shared resources. When multiple threads or processes access shared data without proper locks or synchronization mechanisms, race conditions can occur. So what's happening here? Two threads, thread 1 and 2, are trying to increment a shared variable, shared resource, 100,000 times each. The race condition occurs because both threads access and modify shared resource without any synchronization. Therefore, their operations can interleave, leading to lost updates. As a result, the final value of shared resource might be less than the expected 200,000. Why does it occur? The increment operation shared resource plus equals 1 is not atomic, meaning it can be interrupted between reading and writing the variable. Time of check to time to use vulnerabilities, also called TOC2. This specific type of race condition happens when a system checks a condition, like file permissions, and then performs an action based on that check but the state changes between the check and the action. So what's happening? The talk to example function checks if a file exists and then reads its content after a, an artificial, in this case, delay. During the delay, the file can be deleted and replaced by a malicious file. This change between the check and use, so between OS path exists file name and uh, open file name R, can be exploited. Why does it occur? The state of the file system can change between the time of check and the time of use, allowing an attacker to manipulate the file in the meantime. Atomic or non-atomic operations rather. Operations that need to be completed as a single indivisible step can lead to race conditions if they are interrupted or if interleaved, uh, execution occurs. So what's happening here? 100,000 threads each increment a shared counter variable. The race condition occurs because the read modify write sequence, so temp equals counter, temp plus equals one, counter equals temp, is not atomic. So multiple threads can read the same value of counter before any of them writes back the incremented value. This occurs because the increment operation is broken into multiple steps that can be interleaved between threads. This leads to lost updates. So now that we understand how race conditions occur, let's dive into how attackers exploit them. First, privilege escalation. Attackers can exploit race conditions to gain higher privileges by manipulating the timing of security checks and actions. For instance, modifying a file after its permissions are checked, but before it is used. So here, the privilege escalation example function checks if a file is writable and then writes to it after a delay. The race condition occurs because the permissions of the file can be changed during the delay to make it read-only. This is what we have seen previously. This can allow an attacker to control the timing and potentially gain unauthorized access. This occurs obviously because the state of file permissions changes between the check and the action. Next, data corruption. By exploiting race conditions, attackers can cause data corruption, leading to inconsistent states or erroneous data, which can be particularly damaging in financial systems or databases. So what's happening? Multiple threats are trying to withdraw money from a shared balance. So if multiple threads check the balance simultaneously and see that it's sufficient, they can all proceed to withdraw, leading to an overdraft. So the check and update of the balance are not atomic, allowing interleaving operations. So how do we defend against race conditions? The key is to ensure proper synchronization and to use best practices in concurrent programming. First, mute access and locks. Use mute access, so mutual exclusions, or locks to ensure that only one thread can access a critical section of code at a time. This prevents interleaving and ensures atomic operations. So what's happening here? The shared resource is incremented within a lock context to ensure that only one thread can modify it at a time. Using threading lock ensures mutual exclusion, preventing race conditions. Where possible, use atomic operations. 
uh, provided by your programming language or framework. These operations are designed to be completed without interruption. So, as you know, atomic comes from the word atom, of course, which is originally Greek and means indivisible. What's happening here? The counter is incremented within a lock to ensure atomicity. Using multiprocessing value with a lock ensures atomic updates to the shared variable. Next, thread safe libraries and functions. Using uh, or leveraging thread safe libraries and functions that handle synchronization internally reduces the risk of race condition significantly. So, here a thread safe queue is used to manage tasks processed by multiple worker threads. So, the queue handles synchronization internally, ensuring thread safety. Finally, proper validation. Always validate inputs and conditions right before performing actions and recheck if there's any chance the state could have changed in between. So here the file is checked and opened in a manner that reduces the window for talk to, so time of check to time to use, uh, vulnerabilities. So the prevention here is that we ensure that the state of the file is validated immediately before use, which helps preventing race conditions. So by understanding and implementing these practices, you can significantly reduce the risk of race conditions in your software. Remember, security isn't just about fixing bugs after they occur, it's about designing systems that prevent vulnerabilities from arising in the first place. Thanks for watching this video. If you gain any value out of the channel, consider subscribing and liking the video. Also, leave a comment if you have any questions or topics you'd like me to cover. Until next time, stay secure.